I am Norman, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Watch the Road podcast, where I throw a mic into my car, and I talk to you about watches as I commute to and from Kung Fu, where I will pummel my students just a little bit. So, I do not have notes to look at, or a bullet point list, or anything like that. I also cannot do web searches to confirm anything that I say. So if I misspeak or misstate anything, my apologies. Feel free to berate me all you want on social media. All right, so let's uh, get this episode started. On my wrist tonight, I am wearing the Baltic Aquascaf. And I am wearing this watch in honor of one of the shout outs that'll be going over at the end of this podcast. Uh, This is the White Loom variant that uh, I believe I've already spoken about. Um, I had the yellow version or the cream loom but found that to be way too dark at least on the watch that I had. In pictures it looks fine but for whatever reason It was almost an orange color. So I ended up exchanging that for this one. And I'm pretty sure I have already told you that story. But for those of you who are new, that is what happened. This is a beautiful watch. It has a crazy sort of half box crystal, half domed crystal on it. So it's like it's boxed, but the transition is more gradual than a box crystal. So it kind of starts doming and then flattens out. It's very interesting looking and it creates a lot of really cool distortions and whatnot. And it's a really vintage watch. There's no date on it. It has painted and I believe applied, I'm trying to look while I'm driving, as well as sandwich dial elements on it. So it's got all kinds of cool stuff happening. A textured black dial on it. A sapphire inserted bezel that's fairly minimal. So it's really cool. It's a 39 millimeter, if I remember correctly. So it's nice and smallish for those of us who are kind of vintage watch lovers. And I have it uh, on my uh, uh, Hersher Bain. So, yeah, that will come into play at the end of this episode. I'm super excited because I believe that I have resolved the glitching sound issue that we were having with the first three episodes of this podcast. Well, I'm hopefully I have it resolved. As far as I know, it's happening right now as I'm telling you that I have it resolved. Uh, But over the weekend, I did a couple trial runs of the podcast. I set my phone in a different place than I normally do, and I didn't have any glitches. So I think what was happening is in my first episodes, I would set my phone on the dashboard of my car right in front of the readout there. And I don't know how something like this would cause that, but somehow being in that position it was too close to some kind of electronics or something that was causing interference with the microphone super weird Uh, in my last attempt at this particular episode of the podcast i ended up having to throw it away because about 15 minutes of the second half was all glitched out and quiet so so what i did Over the weekend, as I set my phone on the passenger seat, and I recorded, I think it was about 15 minutes of me just randomly talking, and in spot checking that, I didn't hear any glitches anywhere. Usually they seem to occur at the beginning, although 
Uh, last time it happened really badly, that was near the end. So it's entirely possible that maybe there was some glitches in my trial runs, but I listened to a fair amount of them and didn't hear anything. So hopefully we are all good because that was the only thing that I was that I've been kind of nervous about. If I can't get that resolved, it's kind of a showstopper for the the podcast in general. If I can't get that resolved, who wants to listen to a podcast where the sound is all jacked up? It's bad enough that you're having to listen to a newbie podcaster who doesn't even have a script or bullet points in front of him. But then with that in there, it makes it just unbearable. So at least with the the other areas there uh, with practice I'll be able to get better so the first topic in this episode is about the C65 Trident so as I mentioned I believe in the last podcast my collection for those of you who follow along will be kind of a roller coaster ride of utter insanity uh, because I'm attempting to save for a reverso, but I'm failing miserably. And part of it is, uh, you know, needing, wanting to get pieces that I can share on my YouTube channel and whatnot. And even here with the uh, discussions and with the wrist check at the beginning. So I purchased the D1 Milano and then, like I mentioned, my account was hurting. So I was going to be really good and not buy anything. And then in the course of one week, I ended up purchasing a Bauhaus powerhouse and had three watches up for sale. Um, The C65 Trident by Christopher Ward, the Caliper View, and a G-Shock. The G-Shock ended up selling the C65 uh, did not and it was really bizarre um, because it got a little bit of interest early on but not a whole lot and I was getting offers that were just a uh, hundred or two hundred below what I was asking but at that time I figured it's a Christopher Ward it's a dive style watch It's gonna sell. My price is a little bit on the high end, but uh, someone will likely go for it. And as time went on, I got tons of uh, views on it. I think I had over a thousand views. And if I remember correctly, I had over, at least over 15 followers. It might've even been in the 20s. And at that point I would wake up and I'd have, I'd look and, and boom, there's an offer. And the offer was for like $300. Like way, way below half, like below half of what I was asking for it. And I just, I, I don't understand that. Um, apparently the person didn't really want the watch. They were what, just throwing an insulting offer out there and see if I would take it. I mean, there was obvious interest in the watch. So if you actually want the watch, wouldn't you want to offer something competitive? Offer something that's close to what I'm asking and just maybe I'll want to get it sold because it it was out there a few weeks before this offer came in. So maybe I'm getting impatient, but it was clearly looking like the watch was going to sell with that much interest. Uh, It's just a matter of, do I make an offer that someone will bite on, or will someone come along who's willing to pay what I had it up for? And after that lowball offer, I kind of got irritated and decided I would give it, you know, maybe an hour or so and see if there's any more activity on it. And when I looked in an hour, it really hadn't changed much. Not a whole lot of extra views or anything. So I just was fed up and decided to pull the pull the sale. But it's been great talking to you guys. And I will see you 
or talk to you in the next episode. All right. Thank you.